Welcome to Differential Equations, Chapter 3, Section 2. In this section, we'll be discussing fundamental solutions of linear homogeneous equations. So we have the general format of the second differential uh, equation, which is going to be y double prime plus p of t times y prime plus q of t times y, which is equal to g of t. We must also be given the initial conditions uh, y of t0 is equal to y0, and same thing with the derivative. Um, with the homogeneous equation, that just means that g of t is 0. So the main thing with this section is we're trying to find an interval that the solution is on. So we have to find the interval that p of t is on, the interval that q of t is on, so we can find the interval that the solution is on. So let's go ahead and start off with an example from the textbook. We have t squared minus 3t times the second derivative plus ty prime minus t plus 3y is equal to 0. We also have the initial conditions y of 1 is equal to 2, and the derivative of y at 1 is 1. So uh, what we want to do is we want to have the, this coefficient just to 1. So we have y double prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide t squared minus 3t with each of these factors. So we're going to have y double prime plus ty prime, and we'll actually take out a t, so we're going to have t times t minus 3, and then we're going to subtract t minus 3 times the y, and then divide it by t squared minus 3t, and this is still equal to 0, because 0 divided by this is still 0. So let's clean this up a bit. We have the t's cancel, so this just goes to y prime, y double prime plus y prime over t minus 3 minus t minus 3 times y over t squared minus 3. Oh, forgot the positive sign here, so let's switch these to plus. And this is still going to be equal to 0. So now we can say p of t is actually equal to this, so it's going to be 1 over t minus 3 because we don't take the y prime in there. And then we're going to say q of t is equal to t plus 3 over t squared minus 3t. Forgot the t there. Sorry about that. OK, so now we want to determine what interval both of these are on. So we'll say, well, we can't have the denominator, denominator equal to 0. So we can just say t cannot equal 3 for p of t and for q of t. We can't have t equal to 0, because if we factor out a 0, then it's 0 times some constant. So t can't be 0, and it also can't be 3. So now we want to find the interval for both p of t and q of t, so we can find the interval of the solution. So interval of solution can be, so we'll start off with negative infinity, and the least value is 0, and we'll go from 0 to the next one, and the next one is 3, and then we'll include 3 to infinity. So these are the intervals that some solutions can be on. Now we're trying to find which interval specifically it is on. So we go back up to the initial values. So we had y of 1 is equal to 2. So t is equal to 1. So we want to go down to the, the intervals. And we want to find when t is equal to 1, which interval would this be? That's this one. Because 1 is in between that interval, so we can say the interval of the solution will be only on 0 to 3. The second main topic of 3.2 is the Ronskian. So, Ronskian. And what does this mean? This means that we want to find, so let's say we have two solutions. So we'll have e to the rt and e to the r2t. And we put them in a matrix. And we're saying we're going to take the determinant by having these two bars on the outside. And then this second row is actually going to be the derivative. So we'd have re to the rt and then 
R2E to the RT, R2T. So then we can find the determinant by multiplying these two and subtracting these two multiplied by each other and we're looking for some number or it can be a um, something some function we just don't want this equal to zero if it is equal to zero so if the round scan and we'll just say f1 and f2 and if it equals zero we can say it is linearly dependent and then if the round scan of these two functions is not equal to zero we can say that they are linearly independent okay so let's go ahead and do an example here so um, actually in 3.1 we had y double prime plus 5y prime plus 6y is equal to 0. And we said that um, the solution would be e to the negative 2t, and we'll include the coefficients for this one, e to the negative 2t and e to the negative 3t. So, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to say we've got this first solution, this second solution. We're trying to find the Wronskian of e to the negative 2t and e to the negative 3t. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find if they're linearly dependent or independent. So we're going to put these in a matrix and we'll have e to the negative 2t and e to the negative 3t. And the, uh, the second row we're going to take the derivative of it so we're going to have negative 2e to the negative 2t and then negative 3e to the negative 3t. So then we're going to find the determinant of this matrix, so we're going to multiply these two. So we're going to get negative 3e to the negative 2t times e to the negative 3t, and we're going to subtract this other one, and because we're subtracting a negative number, we're going to add 2e to the negative 2t times e to the negative 3t. So we can clean this up just a bit. So 2 minus 3 is going to be negative 1 e to the negative 2 t e to the negative 3 t. And then we can add these exponents together. So we're just going to get negative e to negative 5 t. So now that we know that the round scan of e to the negative 2 t and e to the negative 3 t is equal to e to the negative 5 t, Oh, can't forget the negative sign there. So it is equal to e to the negative 5t. We know this is not 0. So we can say that these two solutions are linearly independent.